This video is for everyone who is taking their first semester of electricity and magnetism. Now if you're just now taking ENM, pretty soon you'll be subject to learning all about Maxwell's equations in both differential and integral form. Both of these forms have their advantages. Uh, integral form is good if you want to make actual calculations regarding the electric and magnetic fields. And differential form is better if you want to be doing strictly theory. And I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. So I'm going to start with differential form of Maxwell's equations and from those we're going to come up with the integral form using Stokes theorem and divergence theorem. Just a reminder before we go on, I want to define what Stokes theorem is. Stokes theorem is defined as this. <clears throat> if we take a two-dimensional integral of the curl of some vector field dotted into an area, this is equal to, Stokes theorem says that this is equal to a closed line integral or a closed path integral of that vector dotted into a line element. Okay, so this is one of the things that we're going to be using. The second one that we're going to be using is divergence theorem. Divergence theorem says that if we start with a three-dimensional volume integral of the divergence of some vector, d3 just meaning over uh, three-dimensional space, that this is equal to a closed 2D integral or a closed surface integral of that vector dotted into an infinitesimal area. Two things to point out with uh, these two theorems is that with Stokes theorem, you're always going to be dotting into that infinitesimal area because we're taking the curl of two things. Taking the curl is similar to doing a cross product and cross product yields another vector. So in order to get rid of that vector we have to dot it into an area and then that gives us the same thing on the right hand side. We we're going to have a total of a scalar equal to a scalar. So that's good. Um, in divergence theorem we start out with a dot product. We start out with divergence, which immediately gives us a scalar. And this is not dotted into uh, that 3D uh, volume element. This is just multiplied by it. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we also just get a scalar because we get a vector dotted into another vector. So using these theorems, we can convert from Maxwell's equations in differential form straight to integral form. So let's get started with that. The first law we're going to start with is Gauss's law. So seeing as we have divergence on the left hand side, this directly tells us that we're going to be using divergence theorem. So if we set up our equation, we start out with a 3D integral of the divergence of an electric field. This is going to be equal to a 3D integral of Okay, so the 3D integral of the divergence of the electric field is equal to the 3D integral of the magnetic <coughs> of the electric charge distribution divided by that constant epsilon naught. So this constant epsilon naught is a constant, so it can get pulled out of the integral. So in the limit that this charge distribution is continuous, then we can treat this as an integral, and this is just adding up all of the charge distributions. So on the right hand side, we're just going to get some total charge, Q, over epsilon naught. Using divergence theorem on the left hand side, that tells us that this is equal to the surface integral of the electric field dotted into an infinitesimal area. And there we have the first one of Maxwell's equations converted from differential to integral form. Now the second one of Maxwell's equations that we're going to be using involves curl, the curl of the electric field. And the curl of the electric field is equal to the negative time derivative of the magnetic field, you know, with respect to time. One of the most important things to keep in mind when you're doing these conversions is to make sure that if you start with a vector on the left hand side, you end with a vector on the right hand side, and vice versa for scalars. So the curl on the left hand side tells us that we're going to be using Stokes theorem. So we can go ahead and represent this 
as the 2D integral of the curl of E dotted into some area. Okay, so this is, we've got a vector dotted into a vector, so this is going to be a scalar. And this is going to be equal to the 2D integral. Negative can be out here of dB dt. And then this is, of course, dotted into some infinitesimal area. All right, so we can apply Stokes' theorem to the left-hand side. This tells us that this can be rewritten as the closed path integral of E dotted into an infinitesimal line element. And this is going to be equal to, well, we can pull this time derivative out by making it a total derivative. Okay, and this leaves us with the integral of B dotted into dA. What does this look like? This tells us that it's measuring the magnetic field through a patch of area. Well, we can call that whole thing the negative time derivative of the magnetic flux. And there we have the second of Maxwell's equations, namely Faraday's law. So this whole thing tells us that a changing magnetic field generates an electric field. The third of Maxwell's equations that we're going to be using is colloquially known as the no monopole rule. And that tells us that the divergence of the magnetic field is equal to zero. Now this is the hardest of Maxwell's equations. I'm going to write this here. Now this is the hardest of Maxwell's equations to uh, change into integral form, but let's get started. So we can, this divergence tells us that we're going to be using divergence theorem, which says that this can be represented as a 3D integral applying divergence theorem to this integral gives us And we're done. I was being sarcastic. This one's really easy. Now this next and final one of Maxwell's equations is the Ampere-Maxwell equation. And it looks like this. It tells us that the curl of the magnetic field is equal to the permeability of free space times some, uh, some current density plus 1 over c squared dedt. Now this is just the magnetic analog to Faraday's law. It tells us that a changing electric field generates a magnetic field. Um, but this one is the most involved when it comes to converting into integral form, but we're experts now so we can just go ahead and jump right in. Curl tells us we're going to be using Stokes' theorem. So if we write this as the 2D integral, the curl of the magnetic field, I'm going to go ahead and jump straight to pulling this straight out of the integral as the total derivative. And this should look familiar. Okay. This is a lot of terms, but it's a lot of stuff we can deal with. Okay, so applying Stokes' theorem to the left-hand side turns this into a 1D integral of b dot dl. And the left-hand side well, if we add up all of this charge distribution, this can just be represented as some total charge enclosed that I'm going to call I. And then, uh, so this right here exactly represents the electric flux. So again, what we're coming up to is that this is just the time derivative of the electric flux. 
which is just the magnetic analog to Faraday's equation, right? It says that a changing electric field generates a magnetic field. And, this, and then this is the last equation of Maxwell's equations that we came here to derive. Now, throughout this, whole, throughout this whole video, we've talked a lot about curl and divergence, which are inherently operators that help you describe fluid dynamic systems. And this is no coincidence. Maxwell, when he formulated his equations, really viewed electricity and magnetism as if they were fluids. That's why we use words like current to describe the flow of an electric charge. And also earlier in the video, I said that if we use differential form, it's easier for us to do theory. And what, am I, what I mean by that is it helps us connect the dots between Maxwell's equations and other equations of physics. So let's, for example, take the, the last equation we just derived, which is that the curl of the magnetic field is equal to mu naught j plus 1 over c squared uh, de dt. Okay. Let's go ahead and take the divergence of both sides here. If we do that, well, the divergence of the curl is always going to be zero, right? Because divergence is this a glorified way of saying we're taking the cross product between a differential operator and some vector field. Cross product gives us a vector that's perpendicular to both of those vectors. So if we take the divergence, which is a dot product, essentially, we're going to get zero because it's not going to have any mutual components. Okay, so then we get mu naught divergence of j plus 1 over c squared. We're going to do the exact same thing where we pull out that total differential, the divergence of e. And this becomes mu naught div dot j plus 1 over c squared. This is exactly Gauss's law, right? This is just equal to ddt of rho over epsilon naught. All right? And what this gives us is it tells us that, well, this epsilon naught and c squared is just going to be mu naught epsilon naught. So, and then we've got a mu naught here. So all of those actually end up canceling, and we end up getting that the divergence of this flow, of this current density, plus d rho dt is equal to zero. And this is exactly the continuity equation. And what does the continuity equation say? Well, this is just essentially a statement of the conservation of mass for anything flowing, any fluid flowing through a system. So like I said, it's no coincidence that, all, that we're using these things like current and uh, divergence and curl to describe electrody electrodynamic systems. It's because they do behave as if it is fluid flow. And as you can see, the like three steps it took to derive another equation of physics from Maxwell's equations using nothing but differential form. You can follow the same logic to derive things like the wave equation for an, electro for an electromagnetic wave. Now, if you're in ENM now, I'm sure you've had plenty of practice using Gauss's law in uh, integral form. So I'm not going to go into the applications of integral form because I'm sure you're sick to your stomach with it by now. Because uh, I'm sure you're doing things like calculating the electric field uh, at, a, at some arbitrary point for some given charge distribution, stuff like that. So I hope this helps uh, shed some light on how to convert in between those two forms of Maxwell's equations and hope this helps you see where you would apply differential form, which is something that you're going to be less subject to in a formal E&M class.